watch yourself. <laughs> I just almost knocked that over. We just got some round bird. I got a hazelnut. No. I got a pistachio honey vanilla latte. And then Nick got, what'd you get? Strawberry coconut spritzer. Because those of us that can't have coffee due to intestinal inflammation. <laughs> <laughs> So his drink is so on brand for Valentine's Day. And then we got these little, these are the best things known to man. Well, to this round bird coffee shop. I don't know if you can see it, probably not. There you go. Y'all get the hint, we're out here in sunny Florida. <laughs> so we got these little oatmeal things. They're so good. Are they oatmeal or are they carrot cake? their carrot cake i was gonna vlog in there but i got way too nervous so well you get some cart there's so many people in there listen i wouldn't even say it was nervous there was an interesting audience in there yeah there was an interesting audience in there and whenever you got kids running around people ordering specialty things like it's a little different than going to like a bowling alley or like the food court where those of us are more chill so yeah sorry i didn't vlog in there end of the story but let's taste the coffee Delish. <laughs> so I'm not convinced. Hold on. It tastes like Stanford coffee. Sorry, I really drove 20 miles for it. No big deal. back from the beach it was so pretty and so cold i thoroughly enjoyed it but i'm kind of hungry now let me open the blinds i had one of those cookie things but it was too sweet so i'm gonna make an omelet and a bagel i got these baguette bagels from whole foods i'm not entirely sure what it is but it just sounded good and then i have whipped cream cheese and everything bagel seasoning so I'm gonna make an omelet and a bagel, have that for breakfast. Oh, we'll just hang out today. I think I'm gonna do a wine haul for you guys. I'll show you all the wine that I got and whatever other happenings that we get ourselves into today. is served there's my bagel with the seasoning the omelet some coffee and i added in whoop, i added in some strawberries all right i have a big pile of clothes we need to hang up i have been avoiding it for <laughs> i feel like a week now so now is the time there's no time like the present so i figured while we got something done and organize my closet a tiny bit. 
I could give you guys a little of a life update because so much has been going on. I feel like I'm constantly pushed into something else that I have to be doing. So now is the time. And I feel like I haven't caught up with you guys in a while. Like I've done videos, obviously, consistently, but I haven't done like a vlog, I think in like a month or so. So I will start off with the biggest change. And I basically dropped most of my classes at school. <sighs> it was becoming so there was multiple reasons I did that. One, my schedule was not lining up correctly. Like my classes were not going in the correct sequence because I'm a post back student. And what that means is I was following a different path than everybody else who was just taking the degree outright, just like, you know, taking the normal class sequence. I didn't have to do that. And I had the ability to kind of switch classes around. And so I did. But then it ended up biting me in the butt and classes were offered at the same time. And long story short, I'm going to have to graduate later than expected. And in the degree, we can only take classes during certain semesters. So like this, class, well, let's just call it class A is only offered during the spring. And so I have classes that are only offered in spring, but they were matching up this spring. And so you could see how that would be problematic for me to say the least. So my graduation is delayed, which that stinks. But I mean, I've been in college for so long. I've also been working and I have so much going on that I feel like it's, I feel like if this happened to me when I first was an undergrad, it probably would have been a huge deal and I would have been so overwhelmed and sad. However, the stage of life I'm in right now, I'm just like, honestly, I kind of need it. Because the second part of me kind of dropping some classes is that I experienced complete burnout for the first time in my life last semester. I know I was joking about it, but I didn't realize like how bad my burnout was. There was a point right before the semester started, actually, I literally was on my couch crying. Like I was bawling my eyes out. I was like, I can't do it. Like I literally can't do it. I, I, it's just a lot in this degree. And if you're new here, which I feel like I've got a lot of subscribers, a couple hundred the past like few months. If you're new here, I'm in a DPD program at UNF. It's um, nutrition and dietetics because I wanted to be a registered dietitian. And it is literally, I already have my master's, but this is harder than my master's was to get this, this degree. It's really complicated. You have to know a lot of physiology, a lot of anatomy. And then you also have to know a lot about foods, what they contain, what um, diseases there are and how you provide medical nutrition therapy for them. And then you also have to have this counseling aspect where you counsel a patient. I took counseling last semester. It was a nutrition counseling class. And if any of you don't know this, my first degree was in psychology. And so in that degree, I realized I did not want to be a psychologist because I'm a very empathetic person, but I also, things affect me very deeply. So if you're my friend and you tell me you're going through something, I'm going to feel it. And like, you can't be that way if you're a psychologist, or at least you have to have some sort of like kind of barrier between how deeply you feel something, but also being empathetic and sympathetic with your patient and like helping them through a problem, showing them you're there for them, but objectively being able to kind of distance yourself so it doesn't affect you. And I don't have that. So things hurt me very badly or change is very hard for me. I get attached, things like that. So long story short, through taking that class, I was having severe anxiety about having to counsel people in the future. So then I was like, okay, I don't think I wanna be a registered dietitian because I just, that counseling aspect is something I wanted to stay away from just because of my personality. Could I probably do it? Yes, but I, I feel like I would burn out in the profession just like very quickly. So I'm kind of moving towards the more food science part of things, which I find super interesting. And that is where I think my path is going to take me career wise. So I don't know, all that was to say, I just like have been experiencing burnout and it was kind of crippling for a little bit, which was unexpected to say the least. I kind of went MIA on Instagram and all that. 
and honestly with friends and family I kind of just had to pull back and reevaluate a lot of things in my life and what direction I'm going and also I'm in nutritional counseling as we speak I see a dietitian because of my relationship with food wasn't great I had disordered eating and um just a lot of things going on in my life that made me not have a good relationship with food and I was kind of afraid of it so I just realized I don't want to be a registered dietitian and there was a lot of guilt that came with that like I moved all the way up to Jacksonville with my boyfriend to try to have this career or work towards having this career that now I found find out that like might not be for me and so I just when you're dealing with burnout and guilt and being tired and PCOS kind of adds another layer of just extra suck during things like I don't know so I was really going through it and that's kind of why I stopped doing vlogs the past month I just focused on content where I could just like explain something to you turn off the camera and then completely like not have to not like I was acting on camera but I definitely haven't been very happy or fulfilled or like really okay the past month or two well even last time I don't know it's been a while so needless to say we are moving in a couple months out of this apartment we're deciding to go back to central Florida and part of that decision was because the apartment complex we live in also so another layer on top of this was the community we live in they're supposed to be like luxury apartments which they're they're nice on the inside the price is a little high for what it is but that's fine but our cars our car got vandalized basically I want to say two weeks ago three weeks ago and there's a group of people which haven't been caught that come to this neighborhood because it's not a gated community and literally break into at least five cars and it's at least once a month and it's scary because odds are my car is going to get targeted next one of our cars was already targeted it's just I don't know. Also, Jacksonville has a lot, a lot of people, and I I like to kind of have a little bit more freedom to do things without feeling like people are down my neck every two seconds like they are in Jacksonville. I was not meant for huge major cities. Even though Orlando has a lot of people, don't get me wrong, I feel like it's different. There's a hair. I just feel like it's different. I just hung up on my clothes, so I'm proud of me. I also was dealing with really hard family stuff this honestly this past year and I don't know it just I've been like on a roller coaster of emotions the past year and it's just been hard to just like breathe I feel like so I have a plan for when we go back to Orlando and I'm gonna update you guys on that soon but I just want to give you a little idea of what's been going on kind of fill you in because I feel like my stay up here in Jacksonville has been very rocky we went to the beach this morning which was great but I haven't been to the beach yet this is my first time and we moved here like five months ago. I genuinely had zero time last semester and I think that's what burnt me out. I had no time for fun stuff. I had no time to like relax or take a deep breath between YouTube work, doing school full time, trying to run a household and like feeling like I'm failing at it because my house is always a disaster because I just can't get it together enough in one area of my life. So I just felt like I was spiraling and we just kind of nipped in the bud, cut back my classes and we're moving. So I don't know when I'm gonna be finishing this degree, which is kind of scary. I don't want to say I feel like I let myself down because that would be very harsh to say. I just feel like I didn't come up here and accomplish what I wanted to accomplish and that's hard for me to accept but it is what it is and that's life and I have a lot of good things ahead of me and I have a lot of plans and there's a lot of things I want to do and I think I'll be able to do them in Orlando and yeah so that's basically the life update in my closet. Okay, we're gonna do a little wine haul right now because I had a huge pickup order that I did. This one is the Courtney Benham Chardonnay. And what I'll do is I'll put all the notes of the wine and like the region and all that right here because I'm not gonna know all that off the top of my head because this is like over 10 bottles of wine. So I've been really enjoying cooking with Chardonnay. I'm not necessarily there with drinking it yet. And I wanted to try this one. This is the Cupcake Vineyards Butter Kiss Chardonnay. I've heard a lot about the Cupcake brand. I used to think it was like not a great brand, but then there's this one sommelier who commented that it was a pretty good like 
palatable brand for people. And I'm like, okay, I need that because I don't know a ton about wine yet, but I'm learning. This one is a Chenin Blanc Vouvray, which this one's from France. So it just says it is a white wine and it had really good reviews on it. I'm excited to try this. This was kind of like a Chardonnay heavy wine. I think this one's supposed to be slightly sweet from what I read. And also the packaging, like look at that. And then I picked up two of these. This is the Santa Rosola Brachetto di Aqui, which I've talked about before, one of my favorite wines. I'm gonna do that wine video for like my favorite beginner wines, but I figured I would do the haul in this video for the people who wanted to see it. And then I also got, this was a good one. This is a vintage of 2017. It's the Cantina Alta Chardonnay. And this one had amazing reviews. It was a tiny, tiny bit pricey. Nothing I got was over, I think that was 32. Nothing I got was over that. So they're all pretty accessible wines that I got. This one is a Dolcetta di Alba from Italy, vintage 2020. So this one, I thought because it said Dolcetta, I thought it was going to be a Dolcetto. I thought it was going to be sweet, which I prefer, but we'll see. I'm not sure, but one of my goals when we move is I want a wine fridge. So I'm going to treat myself to an anthropology mirror and a wine fridge. I already decided. So this is another Vouvray. This one was a more affordable one. This one is a demi sec, so I know this one's gonna be sweet because champagnes that say demi sec are typically sweet. And this one's from France. I think this was like $14. I can actually link these all down below for you guys if you're interested in any of them because Total Wine carries all of these. I got them all from Total Wine. In case you want more information that I am not sharing. Okay, so there's also two wines that I got that are these two. These are, I'm gonna pronounce this wrong. Sat Saturnas, Saturn. I don't know how to pronounce it that well, but it is a late harvest wine. One is a vintage of 2016 and one's a vintage of 2019. And so this wine, there's something called noble rot, which sounds gross, but there's basically this organism that lives on the grapes and it makes them ripen and turn into raisins. And then that is processed and fermented to make a very sweet late harvest wine. And it's apparently really expensive because it's such hard growing conditions to like replicate year after year. And I don't know, there's just a lot of like rarity with these wines apparently. And I also heard that this wine specifically, the Sauternas, it, it's the one that will keep for absolute years. Like apparently this ages amazingly and these wines in like 10 years are going to be even more beautiful and they'll deepen in color. So. This one is the, oh, that's interesting. This one's a 2016 and this one's a 2019. The 2019 looks a little darker to me. What do you guys think? But I mean, I guess three years aren't gonna make a big difference. So yes, if I get a wine fridge, I'm probably gonna invest in more of these to have them on hand. What else do we have in here? This is an unoaked Chardonnay. This one's from 2020. So typically Chardonnays are put in like these oak barrels to age or ferment. I'm not exactly sure. I need to look it up, but this one's not oaked. It's done in steel. So I'm going to see how that taste differs from the ones that are fermented or aged in oak. That way I can see which one I prefer for myself. Oh, this one, <laughs> this is just a Marsala wine. It's from Florio. It is so good. This is what I cook with. I'm definitely going to like get a couple more of those before I leave just because it's like my favorite wine brand for Marsala. So this is a red from Be Lovely. Apparently this one's a sweet red wine. It's grown in Washington state, so here in the US. So I was like, okay, I'll try that one. I don't know a ton about it, but very good reviews. I kind of look at the reviews because sometimes these people have reviewed like 10 wines, 20 wines, and they know a lot more about wine than I do. And I'm still learning. So I kind of go off reviews for some of these. Now this one is a Chardonnay. It is the Olema Reserve from Sonoma County. The notes on this one sounded absolutely amazing. I'll put them up here, but they just sounded so good. This is another Chardonnay, so I don't know how many Chardonnays we're at now. It's Butter Knife, the Vintage of 2020. It's made in California. I just wanted to give a good 
I just wanted to try out a couple different Chardonnays from California and then also a bra just to see the taste differences. And it's gonna take me a long time to go through these, like a very long time, but I just wanted them on hand. This one's a Demi Sec Champagne Blanc de Blancs from Cruz. What is sparkling? It like really doesn't look sparkling in the, the bottle, but apparently it is sparkling. The more you know. I had this apple pie and wine in here that I never drank that I don't know how it ended up in this box. And then I got another one of the Rinaldi wines. As you guys know, Rinaldi is like my favorite brand for wine. And this one is the Frizzante. So it's like a lightly sparkling red wine that's sweet. So I picked up another one of those. And then last two, I picked up a Moscato for Nick and I for Valentine's Day. It says crazy about love and it's a 2020 pink Moscato. Now I think this one isn't gonna be sweet because the alcohol percentage in this was like 13%. So it's kind of high. I prefer sweet Moscato, but I might like mix this with another Moscato. I don't know if you're supposed to do that, but that's what I'm gonna do. And then last but not least, this one's super interesting. So this one is the St. Regis, it's trying to focus on my face. This is the St. Regis Shiraz Rosé, but it's de-alcoholized. So you can de-alcoholize wine by either heating up the wine and ethanol in the wine, which is the alcohol in it, it has a lower boiling point than the wine does, the water in the wine. So the ethanol will just like, will just steam off and then you're left with the de-alcoholized wine or you can do it through reverse, reverse osmosis. So I'm not sure which one they do, but I just wanted to try it. So here are all the wines aggregated together. And I just bought some wine bags on Amazon so I can transport these in the move. If any of you have moved wine before, let me know what's the best way to do it and the most cost effective. I bought some wine totes that are reusable on Amazon, but I don't necessarily think that's the most cost effective way to do it. So if you have any ideas, let me know. taking a nap but I'm back oh my gosh this is the worst fall giver I'm so sorry <laughs> oh, I know I discussed burnout so I'm sure you guys are all gonna understand and my next videos will be better but I kind of needed to just have this video be what it was gonna be for this week but I figured I would show you what I got Nick for Valentine's Day just to end the vlog here and wrap it up so I did this paint by number and I think it looks kind of cool I'll insert some like progress pics. It doesn't look the best, but I think it'll be super cute. And then I got him like a little gift to go along with it. All that's in here is like chocolates. He loves caramel chocolates or whatever. So I got him those. And then I just got him boxers from Ralph Lauren. Just super simple. Something just cute and sweet for this Valentine's Day. And then this frame is from Target and it was really inexpensive. All right, you guys, that is going to be the end of this vlog. I'm so sorry, it was so random. Oh my goodness. But thank you guys so much for watching. Ignore my messy bed, as always. And yeah, I'm gonna work on some new and fun content coming up this week. 
And then there's Valentine's Day, so happy Valentine's Day. I have some fun videos planned for this upcoming week, so just stay tuned for those. And let me know if you guys would want like a longer format vlog. So this one ended up being, I don't know how long it's gonna be because I still have to edit this and put it up, but it's gonna be around 20 minutes. But if I start vlogging earlier in the week, instead of just vlogging one day, I can make like a 45 minute vlog, which some of you could like wash dishes or fold laundry, just like do stuff while my video was playing because I do that if I'm gonna literally fold laundry or wash dishes. I like some like noise in the background and sometimes I listen to music, sometimes I don't. Oh, you can see me. So then I put on a YouTube video to play. So just let me know if you guys are interested in those and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.